ऑल पार्ट ऑफ कुकिंग गाइज इट्स ऑल पार्ट ऑफ कुकिंग सबको होता है Hi guys, so Scary Chef Sherry is back. Uh, today we're finishing our series. I mean, obviously there will be other Scary Chef Sherry videos. Don't get scared. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but like the series of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is the dinner edition, guys. And I'm going to be showing you two of my uh, dishes that I've obviously perfected in the pandemic. Goulash, which is like a Hungarian goulash, uh, lamb goulash, which is not really Hungarian. It's pretty much Scary Chef Sherry now because I've just thrown in my own stuff. and my famous halwa okay so first up i'm going to take you guys through the ingredients i've already kind of prepped chopping the veggies and stuff uh, as you know scary chef sherry is very diligent and gets her job done efficiently uh, so let me tell you what you're going to need for this recipe i might have forgotten stuff and i might throw it in in between because obviously you guys know i'm not a professional chef so yeah this is what i remembered In terms of veggies we have two onions we've got a potato and carrots mushrooms you can add you can leave out this is the first time i'm throwing them in uh, in all honesty because i just thought they'd be yum and i had them lying around then of course we have the lamb uh, any regular mutton lamb whatever um, available um if you're grossed out by this i'm sorry but if you want to eat it you have to see it like this a lot of spices obviously we've got uh, you know salt pepper rosemary parsley chili flakes paprika uh, black pepper and star anise and i've also got my regular spice dabba if i want to indianize it a bit some butter some olive oil uh, now this is pretty much all the stuff for the goulash uh, for the halwa you're going to need uh, besan uh, some jaggery some ghee and water that's it Okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually pressure cook uh, the meat because this way it's really like that soft nice like yummy mutton and you get the broth as well so what i'm doing is i'm just adding my uh, mutton into um, this container which is for my electric cooker because i can't do the manual stuff but if you have the manual stuff that works as well so once we add in the mutton we're also going to add in one of our onions to this the potato all of the carrots and um, a couple of the mushrooms just so that the broth kind of gets the flavor the rest we're going to use when we make it on the gas um you want to add some salt and pepper and the star anise and that's it and some water obviously the so we're just going to put this into my electric cooker like this So this is started now. My uh, pressure cooker has a meat stew option, so I've always done it on that. I am a pandemic chef. I don't know how this works properly. I don't know how a real cooker works. So just normally, you know, do like your mutton pressure cooking. <laughs> however, you do it. Okay. Okay. So while we're waiting for the meat to cook, I'm going to show you how to make the halwa, guys. Uh, technically, this should be last because it is the dessert and it should be served hot, but. Since I'm filming, since I'm alone, I'm going to do what's convenient. So here we go. <laughs> okay, uh, this halwa is not necessarily dessert. You can also eat it by itself. Like it's great for a cold cough. It's also yum. So okay, um, here we go. First thing we're going to do is start the stove. Duh. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add uh, some ghee to this. Now be generous because the ghee is what makes this, and it's yummy. with ghee so you just want to add like a nice dollop of ghee um the more ghee the better the yummier and again you can do this in a non stick you can do this in um, like a kadai type thing in whatever i do it in a non stick cuz i'm always scared everything is going to burn so you want to wait for your ghee to melt and once that melts we're going to add the besan in so we're taking about like a bowl of besan this much uh, of course you got to see Usually they say it's all equal, like pani, besan, uh, the good, the this. But I just wing it, like I just throw in bits and pieces. So this is for like one person ish, like a person that eats a lot, like me. And then before you throw in the besan, you wanna kind of put the stove on sim because it burns really, really fast. Okay, and then you throw in the besan into this, and you just kind of mix it with the ghee. Feel like I've gone overboard with the ghee, so I'm gonna have to add more besan. So my funda of that little katori vatori ain't working. <laughs> okay, um, again, keep mixing. The key is to keep, keep, keep mixing at all times. Oops, 
scary chef sherry moment guys it's okay it's all good it's all good getting back to it uh don't burn the halwa it's all part of cooking guys it's all part of cooking sabko hota hai now i feel like i put too much uh, besan so i'm going to uh, add more ghee oh sorry this is looking good now this is it guys this is it jitna dala hai utna dalo <laughs> so it's like a nice you know like thin like toffee type ka consistency and a yellowy color uh, but we want it to be like a nicer nuttier brownier chocolate chocolatey or i was going to say <laughs> chocolatey uh, color that kind of looks like you know what like a dark brown So you got to keep doing this for about like 10 15 minutes like on sim patiently. So you really have to watch this closely because if you don't it will burn really really easily and ruin your halwa and the maza of the halwa is when it's like nutty and now I can get that nutty smell. Hmm means the besan is cooking and also my siti is coming from there so which means my mutton is also cooking. multitask okay so after you feel like your halwa is uh, cooked enough we're going to just add uh, the jaggery i usually use like two spoons you can use how much ever you want depending on how sweet you like it as i said some people actually do like equal equal parts also i don't like my halwa very sweet so just like two to three spoons max is what i usually use but whatever you like guys mix it in here so now you can kind of see like the brown caramelly color properly you know coming out with the uh, jaggery and everything else and the halwa has become really really thick so before we burn it we're just going to add some water and let all of this cook so initially you will feel like the water is not mixing and everything is just like floating around um keep stirring it will give you a nice smooth consistency and at this point now you want to increase the gas to make it um, higher so that everything kind of mixes and you know um gives you a nice smooth consistency wala halwa it's already thickened quite a bit so i'm going to add more water because we want this to be smoother So right now everything is a bit lumpy and watery and whatever but trust me it's going to mix and it's going to be smooth and it's going to be yummy um yeah the halwa is going to melt into this and it's going to just be beautiful have faith So again you want to just keep stirring this um and um of course some people's halwa is going to be darker some's going to be lighter the darker it is the nicer it is like the more nutty the more chocolatey the more caramelly flavor you get uh but even if it's not in its like this don't worry it'll still be yum uh it's becoming quite thick now depending on the kind of consistency you like like this is like that thick custard kind of consistency some people even like to add milk to this i don't particularly like milk i like it without milk um so this is what i usually do but yeah as it gets thick like this uh, you just keep stirring keep stirring it's going to get thicker 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 and whenever you are happy with the consistency you quickly serve it and you eat it hot look at how beautiful that is guys look at this just look at this beauty and i think we're done i'm sweating like a pig but it was worth it because my halwa looks amazing and i'm pretty sure it tastes amazing so you put that off and put it into a bowl eat it hot so that's what we're going to do uh, while we're still waiting might as well right okay guys this is yum and it is really really hot i can barely hold the bowl it's that hot mm so good you immediately get that nutty um you know like caramelly flavor mm. yum
Okay, guys. So we've got our, our mutton and the broth out of the cooker, and we're gonna start cooking on this guy. So I'm just using my regular wok. You don't really need to use a wok. Any kind of pot that you have will work for this. What we're gonna do is we are going to add a nice uh, dollop of butter here. The earlier one had ghee. This has butter. Um, I mean, this is not none of this is healthy food, guys. It's all just yummy food. Okay, scary chef Sherry doesn't do healthy. She does yummy. So first thing we're going to do is let uh, the pan, like the pani from the pan go away. After that, we're going to add a tiny bit of olive oil and then add the butter. What this does is, this is a pro chef tip guys, it prevents your butter from burning. I learned this from an actual pro chef in the pandemic uh, when I was doing my cooking thing on Quarren Charity. So yeah, just a little bit of uh, olive oil and then we're going to add this nice stick of butter like a nice big stick and then what we're gonna do is I also forgot some ingredients as usual which I told you guys I would there's uh, onions and then there's uh, some garlic so I forgot to add the garlic we're going to add in the onions and some crushed garlic just one or two cloves you can also use ginger garlic paste if you have that at home we will also be adding that um, that stuff that I forgot. There's also going to be some wine which is optional which I also forgot because it was in the fridge so we'll get to that but so you just want these onions to fry a bit, become brown a bit, toss them around a bit and I've said a bit a lot. So once the onion and garlic uh, you know brown a bit we're going to now start removing this as I told you strain the mutton like the chunks throw them in one by one and the potato and the onion from this whatever you can get out so the point of this is to kind of get the mutton the onions the potato all to get it like a nice you know uh, brown like a bit of a brown color and uh, for it to you know not just be boiled mutton once that has um, a little bit of color, we're going to also add in the mushrooms because the mushrooms will cook really fast. So, you know, you don't really need to like fry them, fry them. Um, just giving them in for some extra flavor and also to get that, you know, like slightly fried flavor for the mushrooms as well. Because we already have mushrooms in the broth. And while your mutton is browning, you want to kind of add some spices to this. So we're going to uh, add some chili flakes. We're going to add um, all the stuff that we have lying around here. Some parsley, a little bit of rosemary. Now you could also add these to the uh, broth if you like. Uh, that also works for like the actual proper full on uh, spices. So you can see the lamb has got this beautiful brown color now and everything is cooking really, really well. Uh, we're also going to add a little bit of paprika um, to this. You cannot make a goulash without a paprika, guys. You have to have paprika powder. So we're going to add a little bit right now and then we're going to add more uh, later. So you just want to slightly, like lightly season it right now. And then from my own regular ghar ka masala box, which you guys have seen before, uh, I'm only going to take one thing, which is the garam masala. Uh, you don't really need to take anything else. You can also use little chilli powder if you want. But uh, this gives it a little bit of a desiness to it, I feel. And the goulash just tastes a little like yummier in my opinion. I just like to give my Hungarian goulash a desi twist. Then the next thing we're going to add is a little bit of soy sauce, just a tiny, teeny bit, okay? This is like, again, as I said, very, very little. Like maybe one spoon worth, that's it. Now, uh, my potato is actually beginning to stick to the pan, so I don't really want to ruin it all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start adding my broth and stuff like that. First, I'm going to add a little bit of ginger garlic paste. I've already put, you know, garlic, so we don't want a lot. Just one spoon. Uh, again, you don't need to, I mean, you don't need to put anything into this. You can just boil it and have it if you want. Uh, but this is what I do. And then we're going to add, okay, this is still hot, the actual pani to this.
you know just stir that nicely so everything you know gets mixed really well uh, and fully like kind of clean out your uh, pressure cooker ka pan because you don't want to miss out on any of these carrots or the yummy bits okay so while this is boiling away beautifully we're just going to add some uh, star anise to this forgot to add that in and the other secret ingredient i was talking about guys is wine uh, you can add a splash of red wine to this if you have some lying around i'm actually opening a bottle because i will like like have it with this at, for dinner as well it pairs really well with red wine um but yeah i mean if you have some lying around in the fridge just use that if you don't skip it i can't even find my uh, regular wine bottle opener so uh, yeah this is like a real struggle where uh, i'm just trying to wing it with one that i found uh, let's hope this works if it doesn't it's a scary chef sherry video so that's all good <laughs> oh i don't have that much strength oh you see the one that you know goes like that and it's so much easier this is a tad bit exhausting maybe i'm going to skip the one and we managed guys who okay so um while we have a lot of extra broth and water and a lot of you might think this looks very watery and soupy but i really like it like that and that's kind of how i have it like with rice like covered in you know like soup um just going to add some of the wine to this and i'm also going to have a sip <laughs> because i'm knackered Hmm. Wine makes everything better. <laughs> okay. We're going to put this to um chill in the fridge a little bit. Ooh, okay guys, I've actually found something else in the fridge as well. Uh I found these uh, sun-dried tomatoes, tomatoes or tomatoes that I had uh which I bought earlier. So just going to throw in some of those also because Why not? They are quite yummy. Like I've been eating them just kachcha like this. Now, what we want to do is you want to taste your broth first before adding more salt and um, you know all of that because we've already put some salt when we boiled it. Okay, so it could use a little more salt. Definitely more pepper. and more paprika so the thing with the goulash is that you've got to kind of keep you know um like seasoning as you go because it is totally dependent on what you like and you know how you like it and how much of what you like like some people don't like a lot of pepper i love a lot of pepper in my food uh, so i'm very generous with that and if you don't have crushed pepper and all regular pepper is also good okay This is just what I have, and as you see, like there's no real uh, metric for this. I don't really have a metric. I just taste and I go along as I taste because I, that's how you know I cannot tell um, whether this is good, bad. And today I've added a lot of new ingredients also. So there's the mushroom angle, there's the tomato angle. Um, I'm just doing another round of all the spices, basically. Mm. Perfect. Okay, so guys, now what you're going to do is we're going to just so you can see this is actually your goulash is going to look pretty much the same. The key to it being yummy is cooking it for really long. So this is what it will finally look like as well. So yum, how beautiful is that? That is that looks divine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just take a lid and we're going to put this on sim like lower the flame and just put a lid and let it cook for 20 to 25 minutes like this just on sim this is going to like lock in all the spices make everything really yummy and tasty and um, that's it i don't have anything else to add look at that how beautiful is that
So guys, that was Scary Chef Sherry's Hungarian lamb goulash and halwa. Uh, these two, I think, are the most complicated recipes I have ever made, and which is why it's taken me this long to get the third video for you guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, comment below and let me know what else you want to see me do because I think uh, these were pretty much the things I really knew how to make well. Now I'm gonna have to try and learn new stuff to teach you guys new stuff. So guys, if you liked the video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Also comment below with, um, you know, what you add to your goulash if you make it. If there's anything else you feel like could make either of these dishes better, except for milk in the halwa. I know that. Um, yeah, comment below and I will see you guys soon. Bye.